What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So this will be a review for Child's Play. I've never actually done deep digging into the franchise thus far on this channel besides comments I made while talking about the TV show. So what I'm going to do is start dropping reviews about each of the movies in the franchise because my channel of course didn't exist at a time for me to do that. So I'm going to start doing that going forward and we're going to start it off of course with the OG back in 1988 that dropped and birthed a horror icon. So we know that Child's Play is directed by Tom Holland who also co-wrote the screenplay along with series creator Don Mancini and John Lafia. It stars Catherine Hicks, Chris Saradin, Alex Vincent and Brad Dorf. Now this film is revolving around a widowed mother Karen Barkley who is giving her son a birthday gift a doll he's always wanted a doll he's been wanting since it got announced from what we see in the film unaware that the doll is possessed by the soul of a serial killer named charles lee ray so i don't think my review for this film will shock anyone but child's play is undoubtedly one of the best horror films from the 80s and just in general it birthed the most iconic killer doll in horror history and it tells a great story about a child slowly losing their innocence and a mother who will do anything to keep that innocence alive. It's also a phenomenal example of how to build suspense before giving your viewer the highly anticipated payoff. At the center of this story, we have young Andy Barkley, who again is a six-year-old boy who seems to be obsessed with the good guy brand and is eager to attain their newest release, a good guy doll. Andy's soon to be new friend to the end. And then there's his mother, Karen who carries the story more than Andy does, I would say. She's widowed, trying to make ends meet, and just wants her son to have an appropriate childhood. And last but not least, you have Charles Lee Ray, the Lakeshore Strangler, who is gunned down by Detective Mike Norris during the intense opening sequence and uses voodoo magics to transfer his soul into Andy's new toy in order to cheat death. What Mancini and his co-writers do so well is they demand your attention very early on with that gripping chase sequence involving some of our key players to open the film. Then they gave us a group of compelling, likable characters to invest in while constantly building the mystery that is Chucky, Charles Lee Ray. Karen and Andy's relationship is easy to invest in and the loss of the husband slash father is a throwaway line, but it aids in making the pair of characters people I'd like to see remain safe from Chucky's wrath. Andy is also one of the most or, or one of the more stronger child characters you could hope to have in a horror film. He's a very resourceful little boy and is, he's not working against the adults around him. He's constantly trying to help solve the case, but no one will listen to him. So how they chose to frame the narrative with us being able to see that Andy is not a child that will annoy you. He's a very resourceful, again, little boy. This only adds to why I and many of you as viewers love him so much because they effectively established a character worth getting behind and are putting him in some very unfortunate predicaments. They're putting this boy that we love so much through the ringer. All of these aspects make Karen and Andy's brief separation that comes in the movie due to Andy's assumed mental instability, it strikes a core with the viewers since I actually care and want to see this relationship left unharmed. Karen's determination to prove that her son is telling the truth about Chucky drives the later half of the story, which does dig a little deeper into Charles Lee, Charles Lee Ray, who he was, while still preserving the mystique around the character to some degree. But we know that's slowly chipped at as the series progresses and we learn more about Chucky and he becomes far more comedic. Her path to the truth will also reunite her with her son. So naturally, this gives me as a viewer something to latch on to because it will bring our two most important characters that Chucky has created a divide between back together. We know Chucky is alive the entire runtime leading up to the iconic fireplace reveal with Karen. But the screenplay toys with the idea of Andy being an unstable child who has just simply gone off the deep end planting seeds of doubt that constantly keeps the story engaging. Yes, you and I saw Charles Lee Ray transfer his soul into the doll, but the film does make it seem like there's a chance Andy possibly didn't receive that possessed doll. And maybe they're showing us things that we want to believe because we want to believe that this is Chucky doing it. But of course, our suspicions about Chucky are confirmed when Chucky attacks Karen in the apartment. The suspenseful scenes in the apartment, Maggie's kill sequence that we know she has when she's watching Andy while Karen is still working. 
which any initial viewer could easily believe to be Andy uh, when he's running across the screen that one moment. The skipping school scene, etc. all just create this unsettling feeling that grows as the story progresses. And while, yes, this is comedic, it has the signature campiness that we come to know and love about the franchise, Child's Play is nowhere near what we see from this franchise going forward. The humor is restricted to mostly one-liners from Chucky, moderately amusing character interactions like the one we see at Karen's job with Walter, Andy's iconic breakfast in bed sequence we have after the opening, and a few other moments that never break the overall suspenseful tone of the film. Alex Vincent is great as Andy Barkley, and at one point he delivered the best performance in this film. The moment when Andy breaks down in tears is hard to watch sometimes now as an adult because no child deserves that, especially not one who is just telling the truth, admittedly a very hard truth to accept. Being a child at the time, he just captures the innocence perfectly, of course, also. Catherine Hicks is tremendous as Karen Barkley, his mother. And Brad Dorf, of course, is just a nightmare-fueled delight as Chucky. That switch in the voice during the fireplace scene remains one of the most chilling horror moments for me. Dorf captures the vindictive, manipulative, and menacing nature of Charles Lee Ray in the best way possible. The overall direction from Tom Holland is wonderful. The pacing is really good as well. And for how short Child's Play is, it accomplishes a lot. Moments intended to build characters don't go on for too long or too little. The suspenseful moments with Chucky get to linger when they should, and nothing ever overstayed its welcome. This movie, again, it's a masterclass in how to build suspense, especially during that sequence where Maggie is babysitting Andy, and we see these little things just to get under our skin. Somebody running by, hearing noises in the dark. Uh, these brief glimpses of weapons being picked up and Maggie not knowing about it. All of those things are well effective ways to build suspense and keep your audience invested in what's about to happen to this character. Uh, and again, the, while the humor is present, it's just not oh, as much as we get as the series progresses. While I love the inherent campiness of it as it goes down the road, obviously Child's Play, I think everyone should be able to at least agree is nowhere in the same vein as what you even see in Child's Play 3. Bride of Chucky, Seed of Chucky, uh, Cult of Chucky, the TV show. Hell, sometimes I guess you could argue sometimes what's in Curse of Chucky. Child's Play, again, one of the best horror films we got in the 80s. It has a phenomenal score as well that really helps add on to the tension and the suspense that's constantly swelling. You guys, let me know what you think about the film down in the comment section below. I would give Child's Play a 8 out of 10. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, and there is a video in the description. I'll have links on my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.